as you said, among males, nasopharyngeal is still number two, number three, which is That's very right. high. Yeah. Um, and then liver is two or three as well interchangeably. Yeah. But the number one is lung cancer. Yeah. I think you told me before that lung cancer among males is specifically directly linked, can be linked to, to smoking, which is clear. But it's not the case with women. And I want to cite my particular personal case where my sister um, demised from lung cancer three years ago, two, three years ago. She was an avowed non-smoker. And the doctor at the time told me that there's a huge prevalence of lung cancer among non-smoking Chinese Asians, I think was his word, right? Now, why is that the case? Yeah, Chang, I'm really sorry to hear yeah. about your sister. And unfortunately, um, this is something that we still have almost zero understanding about, right? So if you see, a, um, you know, you, you can, it, among men with lung cancer, um, 90%, 80 to 90% of those individuals are either current smokers or previous smokers, right? And lung cancer incidence in men is increasing at a very fast rate in Asia, simply because in Malaysia, about 45 to 49% of men smoke. Is that a, is that 45 a fact? 45 to So one out of every two men in Malaysia smoke? <laughs> yes. Wow. That is crazy, That's crazy right? Yeah. I mean, the smoking prevalence in women is much lower. It's maybe about 5 to 10%. And this epidemic is only getting worse because when we have, when others have done surveys of um, Form 4 boys, for example, particularly in government schools, it can be as high as 70% of wow. them have already picked up smoking. The rebel some, without a cause thing, right? Absolutely. And some from the age of eight, right? In Indonesia, especially, a lot of... Yeah. Um, so, so there's a lot of that. And, and so uh, a lot of the lung cancer in men is going to be either due to primary smoking or secondary smoking, right? And it's very hard to kick that problem because, because of the age at which they're picking up. So if you're becoming a smoker when you are um, young, actually it's inbuilt into your pharmacology and to try and kick, it, kick that habit is really hard. But if you picked it up fairly casually when you're in your 30s, to try and give it up actually is much easier because it's not as ingrained within your pharmacology or your physiology of your body, etc. But if we were to look at it in women, on the other hand, you know, similar to men, it's not number one cancer, breast cancer is number one, but it's fairly up there. So why is that? Why do you have high incidence when only 5 to 10% of women smoke? So part of it is due to smoking, secondhand smoke. Because right. maybe the husbands are smoking? Absolutely. Okay. Either the husbands are smoking or they work in a work environment where the cooking maybe where smoking is, is prevalent, etc. But that only explains um, only about fifty to sixty five percent of uh, women who who develop lung cancer have either come across secondhand smoke or smokers themselves, right? And the remaining we actually don't know why that why those women get lung cancer. And for Asian women, the proportion of non-smokers who get lung cancer appears to be higher, and we don't understand why. So there's been a number of research studies to try and tease that out, to try and work out why is it Asian women are getting this disease and this specific type of disease. They, they, there are many types of lung cancer. You know, lung cancer isn't one disease, just like breast cancer isn't one disease. It is many different types of diseases at the molecular level, and each disease has a different ca uh, evolution to become that, ca that disease, right? And for lung cancer in women, what we now know is that there's something peculiar about the, the women, Asian females that are getting this. And it's not just Malaysian Chinese. It's also the Japanese and Koreans and you know, people in mainland China and so on. So when, when researchers have tried to compare uh, what we call case control studies, that means we get a bunch of women who have lung cancer and a bunch of healthy women who don't have the lung cancer, and we ask them, and we try and figure out what's different between these two groups so that we can identify what we call a risk factor. Then, so far, some researchers in Singapore suggest that maybe it's walk frying. They find that women who are more likely to spend a lot of their time frying, you know, cooking using a wok and usually certain types of wok may have a higher propensity to develop lung cancer. But the excess risk is only very small. It accounts for a very small proportion of the lung cancers that occur in Asian female non-smokers. So the research is still open, it's an open-ended question. And we've been trying, I mean, at a personal level, I've been trying to crack at this nut for, for some time with no resources as well as no manpower, but I've been trying to figure out how do we do this better? How do we get a handle at lung cancer 
right, really trying to understand what goes wrong in the in the lungs of Asian women that makes them more likely to develop lung cancer, right? In this particular type of lung cancer. And we haven't figured out how to do it. So very recently, we started a research program to see whether we could um, take lung tissue and try and work out what went wrong in that lung tissue. Because if we understand what goes wrong in that lung tissue and what was the source of an external factor that changed the genetics of that lung tissue, we could begin to understand you know, what, might be the, the, what might be the external factor that caused that, that cancer. Right? So a very good friend of mine, Nick Serena, who's a geneticist in Cambridge, had this really nice analogy of how she described looking at genetics, right? which is that you know, imagine, I'm sure you've done this, you know, you've gone to the beach and you've seen on the beach you know, lots and lots of footprints, right? But you can immediately look at that and say, oh, um, uh, adults have been here, children have been here, and a couple of birds have been here as well because you can see the footprints in the sand, right? So in the same way, an external agent that mutates the DNA of a normal cell and makes that DNA now abnormal and make it grow like a cancer cell, leaps a footprint on that DNA, right? So geneticists like me can go in and sequence that footprint and analyze that footprint and, and match make it and say, hey, this was a bird, or this was a baby, or this was an adult male that is about 200 pounds and needs to go on diet, etc. But effectively, we can go and look at the genomes of a cancer and work out what was the mutagen, what was the external factor that caused this cancer to develop. I would love to be able to do that in, in, for Asian women to try and work out why are Asian women developing this disease. At the moment, I can't figure out how to get normal lungs. <laughs>